If you've thought about bringing virtual reality to your classroom, it might be easier than you think. Let's talk today about some low-tech virtual reality experiences for students. Hi there, and thank you for joining me for this video. If we haven't met before, my name is Monica Burns. I'm an ed tech and curriculum consultant. I'm the founder of classtechtips.com, a blog full of ed tech tips, and the host of the Easy Ed Tech podcast. Let's dive into this video together. There are different kinds of experiences students can have as explorers in digital spaces, including different types of mixed reality content they might come across. This could include virtual reality with or without a headset, 360 video content that lets them press play and look in all directions as the video moves through uh, each moment, and panoramic views, which can include interactive opportunities for students to not only spin back and forth in a picture, but to also take a walk and explore different places. Virtual reality experiences for students can take many different forms and sometimes we'll look at augmented reality, which is one type of technology that would fall underneath a mixed reality uh, category, or we might narrow in on just one type of experience to introduce students to at first. There is a lot to sort through and a lot of great resources out there and available for students. One that we'll take a look at together and you can get a peek over my shoulder now is Google Arts and Culture. This is a free website. They also have a mobile app that provides lots of opportunities for students to go out and explore the world. As we take a look at this resource together, you'll hear me mention a few of the prompts or questions you might introduce to students along the way. So right now I'm here at Google Arts and Culture's website. You can find it by going to artsandculture.google.com. One thing I love about going to their homepage is that it always looks a little different. <laughs> you can find lots of different featured resources right here at the top of the page before scrolling down to dive a little bit deeper. Now, as I mentioned, there's also an iPad iPhone, iOS friendly app on the Apple App Store, and an Android app that you can find on Google Play as well. We're not talking about augmented reality specifically today, but these apps are great if you're exploring those types of pieces of technology as well. What we will look at together are some of the explorations that you can go on that you can walk through to experience a place in a virtual reality style simulation. Now, although there is often great content to choose from straight from their site, I'm going to take you instead to the search bar at the top of the page. And I'm gonna type in a favorite place you might want to explore with students, the Grand Canyon. Now, of course, there is no substitute for the real thing. And as you hear me mention a few different discussion prompts you might share with students, um, I'll point out some of the ways you might spark a conversation with a place that might just be hard for students to be able to visit. Now the museum views here on Google Arts and Culture is where it is at. So we are going to tap on one of these to take a walk and explore together. As the page opens up here, it looks just like an image, but that's where your cursor turns into a little hand and allows you to move around this space. We can look up and down in all different directions. Now, this is more than just a 360 panoramic <laughs> image. What 360 panoramas were one that I mentioned when we first got started today. This is an interactive space where students can actually take a walk on the trail, move around in all different directions and get a feel for a place that might be challenging or impossible for them to visit during a unit of study where getting a peek at the Grand Canyon would come in handy. What kind of questions might you ask if you bring students to a place like this? Well, you might ask them to think about what time of day is it in this place? What do you think it smells like here? What do you think the temperature is like when this photograph or this 360 experience was captured. 
You might ask them questions about what types of animals could live in a particular place that you're traveling to. There are lots of options related to the place, the content, and the focus that you might bring to this type of activity with students. Now, the types of questions you ask students could fall into a few different categories. You might ask them questions around their observations, what kind of things they see as they are exploring a new place virtually. You might ask them questions that prompt wondering so that they can jot down and capture things that they want to know a little bit about. Sometimes wondering questions don't have one answer or an answer at all. They're simply a way for students to capture questions that they have about a place they're exploring. In addition to questions that focus on observations and wonderings, you might ask questions that prompt students to build empathy or connect to any of your SEL or social emotional learning goals. This could include questions that are focused in on someone else's perspective when they are visiting or living in a certain place. It might even include questions like how far away are we from this place or how is their morning different than our morning? What is the time difference and what must it be like to have more daylight or less daylight hours depending on where they live in that part of the world? As you're building out virtual reality experiences and introducing these types of low-tech tools to students, having a clear focus and some set discussion questions can help make sure that that experience is true to your initial intentions. Let's head back out now to Google Arts and Culture to share a few tips for navigating this space and introducing these activities to students. Now at the very top of the screen, I'll scoot it down for you here, you can see a long link. Now you might grab this link and copy and paste an experience that you've handpicked for students into a space they're already working. This might include a learning management system, or if you don't have one place where you would share this link, it is way too long to type in for students. So you could create a short link using a short URL tool or a URL shortener, or you might decide to turn that link into a QR code if kids are gonna scan it with a device. Speaking of devices that you might scan something with, if you are creating a QR code and kids are scanning with a mobile device, many of these experiences are mobile responsive, meaning instead of grabbing the screen with a pointer or this little hand, you instead are going to see the space move based on tapping on the screen or physically moving a device back and forth really just depends on what you happen to be using. I would suggest trying out any of these experiences on the same devices your students have access to before sharing them. Let's come back out here to the home screen and I wanna share with you another place to go to explore these spaces. Right here at the top, I mentioned that there are featured pieces of content. If you see one with a 360 in the title, or you see one with this little icon, you'll be able to do something similar to what we just did within our Grand Canyon space. If you see the explore area and a little person, like they're walking in street view in Google Maps, that's also telling you that you are able to explore these spaces. Now we are scratching the surface with what you can find here at Google Arts and Culture's website. So I encourage you to dive in and see lots of different things that are available for you to explore. And of course, just like me, you can use the search bar at the top and type in a place that you want to bring your students to in this virtual reality experience. Remember, as you build out these virtual reality opportunities for your class, make sure to choose a place that you can ask students questions about that will spark a discussion. If your students are working on this type of activity synchronously, so live and all together, you might pause and have students turn and talk or stop and jot some of their observations. If your students are working asynchronously or on a self-paced manner or on their own schedule, you might provide a space for them to post a idea, something that came to mind for them, or a big takeaway that they can share with their fellow classmates.